Oh, I think I made a mistake. Yeah, wow. Hello. Something exciting's happening today, guys. Oh, look at it. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. That, guys, is a thousand gallon propane tank being installed. I got this feeling of fire inside. Watch me reach up, pull the sun from the sky. I'm all done waiting for life to arrive. I'm gonna make, make today my First fill of propane coming right there into our tank. First stage regulator comes off of the valve. This right here, we can shut the whole propane system off. And right now we've got mm, nothing, no propane in there. So I think they're gonna fill it to 80%. 80% of a thousand gallons should be about 800 gallons. We're gonna get put in here because it's summertime. Winter time, they can fill it up to 85%. And that's just to make sure that you don't overpressurize the tank. Right here is the blow off valve. <laughs> high pressure release in case there's a fire or just in case it gets too hot, the tank will not explode. It'll pop that valve, it'll poof, shoot propane up into the air safely. So we got the truck down there and then there's a 100 foot hose. Comes here into this, it goes right into here. And right now we're at about 38%. It took a lot of figuring, little trial and error, but we got it. Rafter tail coming up, bird mouth goes over the OSB, cruises up right to here. We got a hanger here. We did mess up on this one, cut it an inch too short on accident, but we did not follow the special rule, which is measure twice, cut once. We measure once and then we cut. Ah, uh, yeah. This one comes down goes to there there'll be a wall right here supporting these rafters right here down to this wall down here we'll have about a six foot span of unsupported where the snow can slide off of this roof and land on here and so it'll be a pretty good drop when you get out here towards the edge i'm hoping it'll be fine this is Seth's first time using the palm nailer yep let's see what you think of it Seth. okay give it a try whoa is that better than using a hammer? Yeah, that's cool, that's awesome. These right here are the hangers that we're using for the rafters up here on the ridge board. These are them right here. So that's gonna go ahead and get all of the hangers set, lining them up perfectly there, look at them. Yeah. Um, I think I would go over just a hair more, up a little bit more, a little, yeah, right about there. Okay. All right, so he's gonna just tap them in there with the hammer first. Just in case he makes a mistake, then it's a lot easier to get those nails out. Show them up there on top here how they fit together. So guys, right here, you can kind of see they kind of just fit together like a puzzle. And then they slide back and forth. There's a little bit of wiggle room so that you can just line them up perfectly like that. Now you can use the awesome palm nailer. Now that you got it set right where you want it. While Seth's working on that, I'm gonna work on the rafters, getting those measured and cut and put in place. So hopefully they all come out looking just like this one right here, but not like this one right here. So hopefully we'll measure those right next time on the future ones. We went ahead and did the middle one like this first so that we could get the ridge board set where it's gonna be. So we don't actually start pushing it one way or pushing it the other way by just going down one side. If you did that, you'd probably have a bow like this in your ridge board. So we got the middle one set. Now we can just go down one side and then go down the other side. Look who's uh, back now. Hi. They were at a women's prayer group with the church this morning. And Jules brought me something from the post office from my mom. Let's see what it is. What did mom send me? I have an idea. I'm pretty sure I left my sunglasses at their campsite. So I think it might be my sunglasses. Thank you very much, mom. Whatever it is, thank you. King it is, it's my sunglasses. Look at that, so cool. Thank you very much, awesome. Cause you guys know that I look the coolest when I wear these glasses. These are my safety glasses. Now I can be safe again. Ah, oh, delicious. You might think, what are you saying delicious for? Well, for you guys that know Indonesian, you know that that's kind of a play on an Indonesian word, enak. Enak can mean delicious or like comfortable. These guys are comfortable. But I always like to play, play a game with that word and say, Ah, 
delicious. Look at this guys, we've got saw horses out here. Some of you were asking if we own saw horses, we do, we just never use them, but we're using them today. And Jules is in here, she's gonna be cutting all the blocking. Run with the heart, run through the hills, deep in the place where secrets reveal the feeling home, a feeling See if it fits. Like a glove. All right, so I think we got this pretty much figured out on how we're doing it. I'll share with you how I'm doing it. Maybe it'll be helpful to somebody, and maybe you could tell me how I'm doing it wrong if I'm doing it wrong. But I'm measuring right from here because that's where the bottom of the rafter is gonna be, and then to where it meets the wall right here, which is gonna be 63 and an eighth inches. So we take that 63 and an eighth inch, and then we can lay out our rafter. All right, so this is a eight foot long two by six that we're using for the rafters on this side of the hallway here. So we're gonna come down here four inches so that we've got enough space to mark our angle cut here and have a straight line to use as a reference later. This right here is an adjustable square by Maze. My dad actually gave this to me, super handy. You just mark it to what the pitch is of your roof. Ours is a 912 and it gives you the angle that you need to cut. So we're gonna lay it on here, bring it right up to our four inch mark right there and draw that line right there. We'll cut that off in a minute. Then we take our tape measure and we've got our line right here at four inches. So we'll come down here. We know that we wanted 63 and an eighth. So we're gonna go down 63, add four inches, one, two, three, four, and an eighth. We got our mark right here. Then we can take our square. This is the beginning of our bird's mouth. It's gonna go this way like that then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this guy again just because it's already set up and easy although it's not big enough for our bird's mouth but it will get us a start on it it'll get the right angle here anyway so we got that guy going then we take our big square we've already got our marks on here All right this is a 612 or a 912 pitch so we could go like to 12 and then down to nine over here but you see that's that's way too big so we've already marked it where we need it for what we're doing so we've got our pencil mark here and our pencil mark right there we line them up perfectly and it just so happens to follow that exact same line that we drew earlier so we can draw that and we'll cut this out yeah and it should fit We needed a few more pieces to finish the blocking off for this side. All right, right now we are setting up the table saw to get the right angle on this. It is unplugged right now, but uh, we want to get the right angle cut on here so that we can get this blocking done. You guys remember David from Imagine Acre Woods? I think his channel now is called Latch Key Kid. He gave me this table saw when they moved from Idaho and uh, it works really good. However, it is the scariest piece of equipment that I own. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like table saws very much, but they are necessary. See here for the fascia, we're gonna need 141 and a quarter inches. We're using two by eight for the fascia. This board is a little too long, but we bought a 16 footer. I don't know why we did. We just had it in the garage, so we're gonna use it. It wasn't the easiest cut though. It's just not working very well lately. I think maybe the battery's low.
We're cutting off the rafter tails now. You can see we cut these two right here already. And all we did was we measured out how far we wanted our overhang to be. And then we did a chalk line. You can see the chalk line here. So we took our square here and went up to the chalk line. Just put a mark going down like this right here, that little mark, so that we could see it when we use this one. Then we took this one, slid it up right there to where this line comes up and meets right there. Do a line, now we got that line. So we did that to all of them going down. Now we're just taking the skill saw and cutting them off. Nice little step stool. Yeah, <laughs> safety Sally approved. Probably not. All right, so this saw is definitely heavier than the battery one, but it cuts a lot better. It's a little tiring leaning out here, cutting these things off. You've been with me when I laugh or cry. Anywhere I stood, you were standing by. With me when I'm fine. We're going to measure from down there up to right here. And that's going to give us the distance. I'll show you on this one here. The distance from this, the edge of this cut right here to this cut right here. And then we can cut all of these two by sixes down there and carry them up and then put them in place. We've got all of our 18 foot long two by sixes here in the garage. We're going to cut them down here, take them up and put them up there. We're just going to do this first one right now and then go see if it fits properly, then we can cut the rest. This one right here turned out just to be a little tricky because of this wane right here on the wood. And so we had to continue the line down so that we could get the right angle. I wanted to end it right here because that's the edge of the wood, but that would have put us about a quarter of an inch off. Did you guys see that happening as I was making that first cut? Let me know down in the comments below. I, it can pass you by. It can be your Try to slide this up here to you, Jules. Okay, got it. it can wait How's it fit? A little short. A little short. Look at the sun right there, man. Wow. That is super red. And you can see the smoke in between the camera and the trees right there. It is super smoky today, guys. It smells like a campfire out here. There's got to be some fires close by somewhere. You can barely see the mountain right there. But we couldn't find anything on the news. Maybe it's just blown in from further away. I don't know. Oh, man, that's way short. It looks like we're about an inch short. Huh. I would think. Whoa, we're more than, we're like two inches short. Oh, I think I made a mistake. Yeah, wow. Well, we can use that one to go against the wall right here because it doesn't actually need to connect to here. This one, which is also short, will move down over here against that wall because it'll be nailed all along the wall going down. And this one will move against that wall. But that means we cannot make any more mistakes. And all the other ones yesterday, I measured twice and cut once. Did not follow that rule today. So, that one's wrong. We'll double check all the rest of them. Wait a little bit longer. Wait a little, we'll be coming around again. Cause you know right. stronger. So I know what I did last time. I did my math wrong. Instead of adding four inches to the overall length when I marked it down there, because we came down four inches right here, I added three inches to 175 instead of 176. So hopefully this time it's gonna fit perfectly to this line right here. Holding on and letting go, I don't know if we oughta, know if we oughta, know I don't. All right, let's go put it up there again and see if it'll fit. What do you think? Yeah, it's gonna fit. Is it lined up on the mark there? Pretty good, right there. All right, let's see how she fits. Fit? Thumbs up. All right, cool. All right, so I'll hold it here. All right, so it turns out this one here is about a quarter inch too long, which is okay. We can trim it when we go to actually set it in its place. So what we're gonna do is just continue on cutting them. We'll bring them out here. We'll make sure that they fit or that they're hopefully just a little too long. And then uh, we can fine tune it when we actually put them in place. What do you think about that? 
Sounds like a plan. I don't know if this is the right or the wrong thing to do, but you guys know we have this whole saga with Cleopatra. Well, I thought she had gone missing, but I found her this morning in our woodshed. So I'm gonna give her a little bit of food and a little bit of water because I think she's brooding. I wanna check and see if she has any eggs under her right now? I don't even know. Is she supposed to have food and water? I don't even know what I'm doing. But it seems to me like she's not getting up and I don't want her to die. So I'm gonna give her some food and water. This is our wood shed. And there she is, right there in the corner. When I found her this morning, I actually thought she might be dead. She was not moving. Like she was super, super still. But since then I've come out and checked on her and her little head's moving. So I wanna check and see if she has any eggs under her first. Hey Cleopatra. Hello. Got any eggs under you? Oh, 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 she doesn't like that. Okay, she definitely did not like me reaching under her, so I am prepared. I've got my glove on. I've never been picked by any of our chickens before. All right, Cleopatra, I just want to see under you. I'm sorry. This is all new to me. It's okay, it's okay. I just want to see. Oh yeah, she's got lots of eggs. Yeah, lots of them. Okay, okay. All right, look, here's some food in case you're hungry. She's really mad at me. Is she supposed to have food and water, you guys? I have no idea. All right, here's some water. She definitely does not look amused. I think I should leave her in peace. One more thing, you guys, check this out. I found this this morning as well. Look at all those eggs. What a bugger. So Cleopatra definitely had me fooled. I thought she had just gone missing, but no, she was actually in here laying eggs under our logs. What are you doing? Stealing her food. You're such a meanie. Get away. We got our big ladder set up here so we don't have to keep going up and down the stairs over there, around the house every time we need to come up here, go down here, which is gonna be pretty often. We're using these big timber lock screws right here. These are actually designed to replace hurricane ties. I like using these better. This one right here slid off. Man, look at that, busted it right off. <sighs> Take a look at it, see if we can glue it and clamp it. Should be strong, huh? after that. It's actually one that's going underneath this roof right here. So it won't actually have any load. No, there'll be no snow on it or anything. It'll just be sitting there basically. Give it a try and see. We're gonna try to glue it together with this right here. Tight bond, waterproof exterior wood glue. We use this actually on our trailer, our stair runners. We used them on those when it broke and uh, seem to be holding up, held up all winter. So we're gonna use it on this and give it a try. Just working it into the grain a little bit. Make sure it gets a good contact with all the wood. Test out their water in. So what do you guys think? Is this going to work? Is it going to hold it together good and be a strong rafter? Supposedly, the glue joint is actually stronger than the original wood itself. So, I think it should work fine. I'm going to go ahead and just put a few screws in here as well, just to really sink it down into that glue. This is going to be Our next step is to work on this little wall right here. We went ahead and laid the bottom plate and now we've got to work on all of the, what do you call them? Studs, I don't know. <laughs> Building our studs for our short little wall here. We've kind of got our pattern that we're using just to keep everything the same. And we just line it up here. Quick little mark, we'll square it up. Cut it and it should be, should be right. That's what we're hoping for anyway.
You guys are making good progress. Thanks. Yeah, we added to the pile that Kim and Norm started while they were here. And then we've thrown some over here. These ones we just put in a pile because they need stacked. Seth's getting another one ready. Whoa. Too heavy. <laughs> so we're doing this, guys, because it's already August. All this wood needs to be dried before we need to use it during the winter. So we yeah. gotta get a move on. We gotta hurry up. <laughs> Look at all that. We've got a long ways to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for your help. That's how we're gonna notch these. Instead of drilling holes because they're so short, we're gonna have a like a two inch insulation piece that's gonna come down, offset one inch from the decking up here. So then it can pick up the vent here coming up and it'll come down to about here. And so we'll have plenty of venting coming up through these holes. We'll wrap it like this with screen so that the bugs can't get up, but eventually they'll be faced, there'll be a, a soft fit underneath it as well. But for now, we'll cover it up with screen so the bugs can't get in. It's the screen we're gonna be using to seal up these holes in the bird blocking. That's how it's gonna work right there. The OSB is gonna come down or the roof sheathing will come down and lay down flat on here, which will close it up here. And then the bugs can't get in. Like I said earlier, there'll be a soffit down here with venting in it later. that will look all nice from down below, but this is for temporary, just like all these holes up in here. There'll be a soffit up there that'll cover up all those holes in that side. Face it fits good. We got her all lined up. We just got to put all the nails in her. It's dropped down like this because the OSB is going to come down like that. Come all the way out to the edge here. 912 pitch roof, so it's dropped down pretty far. You don't use galvanized nails, you get big rust streaks. All right, we're going to be sheathing this side. Another morning in here, guys. Let me show you what we got done yesterday. The hallway connecting the apartment to the house is coming together here. It's about this tall, as you can see. It goes into the loft over here. Also got storage area kind of along this side right here. And over there where Jules is, we can store stuff or put bookshelves or something over there. I think it'd be really fun to have like a little reading nook right here. We got like little bookshelves and like little sofas or something like that, comfy chairs. So today, Today, what we want to try to work on is getting the blocking up here and the blocking down there so we can get the sheathing on this side because every time it rains it floods our crawl space so we want to try to get this done hopefully today There we go. We got it square. So we're marking these to be able to notch them like we've been notching them down here. And that's just for ventilation. We're going to have a ridge vent up here. So the ridge cap on the roof will have a special foam kind of uh, venting filter, basically. Bugs and rain and stuff can't get in but hot air can come out and that way we can vent this roof because we only have you know five and a half inches of space here to insulate and venting so we're notching these guys for that just setting up the saw again to cut this little bevel right here on the blocking for the bird blocking on the rafters on the west side of the addition. And the saw is unplugged. Unplugged. <laughs> We're gonna do one, give it a try, and then we can do them all. Let's see how she fits.
All right, that'll work. We're gonna use this screen for the bird blocking like we did on the other side. This is how thick it usually is. He already cut it in half, and now I'm just cutting 14 inch strips. So we got all the blocking in. And now we're going to measure the rafters and cut them off, cut the rafter tails off to the proper length so we can put the fascia up. We want these rafter tails to be slightly inside of this edge here so that when water drips off of the roof, it doesn't come down and splash on this roof. We want this one to go over this one and go straight down to the ground. This one up here is uh, it's 27 inches. So this one down here, we're just gonna make a little bit shorter. We're gonna make it 23 inches. Then it'll be well within inside. And so when the snow, if the snow does curl, this is a 912 pitch. So normally the snow just slides right off of it but in case it does want to curl under at some point and fall down it won't fall down onto the rafter tails here of course this side oh it's gonna be snow piling up it's gonna fall off of there onto here so that might be kind of loud when it happens it'll be interesting to see this winter Only a few more to go. <laughs> We call these right here H clips or plywood sheathing clips. They look like this. Basically it just supplies a little bit of support and also gives it the proper spacing. Put the harness on because, oh, we want to be safe. I don't want to fall off the roof today, maybe tomorrow. So this is my favorite diaper. They have those other kind that like, it's like a full body harness and hooks to the back back here. That's not really a harness to like hold you up. It's a, if you fall, it'll catch you harness. But with this pitch of a roof, this is more like rock climbing than walking around and in case you fall, you need a harness. So we actually use the harness as a support while we're working on the roof. That's why we're using this one. So you can hook and lean back and, and work. I wanna make sure you put this on the right way. I Met you in the sun, saw my plans come undone, cause I knew you were the one. So it's a long fall. Yeah, it's a long fall. We don't want to fall. Falling's against the rules today. Ready? Ready him. This is pretty good traction right now. See ya. See ya. Now that we've got it all sheathed, let's see Marty's reaction. Okay, come on in. Ooh, that looks nice, huh? It's so, it works so good. amazing. That's cool, man. Uh, it actually is a little bit, it's a little large-ish. It feels big now that's all sheathed. Yeah, what I was thinking is, because this side's a little bit bigger, what if there was a beanbag chair right here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, like you like you'd said. My reading nook. Yeah, and then like... <laughs> <laughs> bookshelves all along this side and bookshelves all along that side. I know. It's so cool? pretty. Yeah. I think we should put some skylights in. I think a skylight would be cool. You look pretty comfortable down there. Yeah, it's nice. It's shady. I'm zoomed it's up on you. It's getting hot there on the roof. It's got a kind of a cool mood lighting right now. Of course, that'll go away once we get it all closed up. But we got some packages, man. We did? 
Yeah, let's go open them. You are definitely going to want to see what is in these packages, guys. It is way cool. I'm so excited about it. On our way over there, though, let me show you what it looks like here from the front. Because it does look pretty cool, actually. It came out like I kind of envisioned it. But it does. It looks good. Look at that. Isn't that cool? It gives it like some depth or something. We got one more thing to show you before we get to the packages. We got all this done because our crawl space kept flooding every time it rained. Now we don't have rain in the forecast again, but I'll show you what's going on down there. There we go. Uh, look at that, man. We got water over there. We got water over there. We got water over there in that corner. Oh, we got like a massive lake over there. We got to clean up. And hopefully we'll get the underlayment on here in the next video before it rains again. That way we don't have any more flooding in a crawl space. I actually forget when it ordered, so <laughs> this will be a surprise for all of us. There we go. I see it. They're white, white round things. Oh boy. Oh, this is exciting. Dude, there's a lot in there. I know. <laughs> there's 12 cans in there. I kind of went crazy. This is freeze dried chicken slices. This is the family can, or I think some people call them number 10 cans. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Sausage crumbles, sweet corn, green bell peppers, ooh, kale. I love their kale, it's so good. That's oh. really good in kale soup. Yes, it's super good. I love red, their red bell peppers too, so good. More seasoned chicken slices, more sausage crumbles, green bell peppers. If you're not um, getting it yet, I bought two of everything. <laughs> <laughs> While Jules is opening up that second box, I gotta tell you guys, we're kind of addicted to Thrive Life. Like Jules just stocked up on all of that. But I mean, we've got tons of Thrive Life stuff, right? It's super cool because it's a 25 year shelf life. And guys, right now for the month of August, this is the biggest sale that we have ever seen since we started buying Thrive Life. Put like 30% off plus an additional discount, delivery member discount, and then there's other stuff that's on sale. And so it's like super, super discounted for the month of August. If you're thinking about, you know, being prepared for anything that might be coming, or you just want to use freeze dried food in your everyday cooking, like Jules does, then uh, you might want to check out Thrive Life. I'll put a link down in the description where you can check it out. But let's see what else Jules got. Okay, box number two. I got um, green chili peppers. Two Whoa, wow. Can you hand that to me? So two green chili peppers, and these are their pantry cans. I don't think that they sell the um, green chili peppers in their family cans. Another family favorite is their scrambled egg mix, and I bought two of those as well. And then the last one, which we also really, really love, is their pulled pork. We use them in our everyday life, but also I couldn't pass up this huge sale. Like Marty said, this is like the biggest sale that we have ever seen with Thrive Life. So we still have a few days left in August. I might be going back for more. <laughs> Just to be 100% clear, this is not a sponsored video. We purchased all of this with our own money because we really like the stuff. We're consultants for Thrive Life. So there's a link in the description, like I said below. Check it out if you're interested at all in freeze-dried food that not only stores for 25 years, but is awesome and just everyday cooking. You can cook your regular recipes with it.